Hi guys, this is Demon Rants, and today uh, we're finally going to review uh, Fuel's third album, Natural Selection. And sorry for the uh, big break from videos. Uh, I've been dealing with some stuff, you know, you know, teenage type stuff. You know, uh, I don't have as much fun with the videos anymore, so it's not like I'm uploading constantly. But I will, uh, I will try and like make my videos a bit more experimental by getting like a, a good editing software going. I'll make some like music video, star videos, you know, to test it out and stuff, but yeah, but I promised I'd do it, and we're going to continue the Fuel albums, don't worry, after after this one, I am going to do a pretty controversial video, Star Wars The Last Jedi, so be prepared for that one, but yeah, so today, obviously, we're going to be reviewing Fuel's third album, Natural Selection, we'll finally get to it, uh, may as well start the review now, so yeah, Fuel, uh, so, something like Human came out, and it had the big hits like Hemorrhage and Bad Day and stuff like that. And it was, and it was, uh, it really put them on the map. And Fuel started, like, having, like, you know, TV um, appearances back in, like, the early 2000s, like, freaking years ago. You know, a de you know, nearly two decades ago. Uh, you know, they were on, like, VH1 Storytellers, which I, I do recommend watching that. It's, it's on uh, Fuelie's official, the official... Uh, YouTube account for uh, Fuel fans, and it's, uh, you know, VH1, and they're on stage, you know, Carl Bell talks about some of the song meanings, and, like, Brett is just singing his heart out on that on that show, but, yeah, they were on, like, David Letterman, and a few other type shows, you know, in the musical bit, so, yeah, they, they had some, a bit of TV presence, but that didn't last for long, because in around 2001, uh, Carl Bell, the guitarist, accidentally hit Brett Scallions in the nose with the head of his guitar, which caused him to go into surgery, you know, to get his nose repaired. And he got his nose repaired, but it altered the way he sung, so he had to basically learn how to properly sing again, which basically put the band on a short hiatus, like, you know, a year of them not playing live and stuff like that, I guess. And uh, they spent a year making the new album, and that's what it was. So, yeah, so so Natural Selection. It was released on um, the 23rd of September, you know, September 23rd, 2003, which is actually a very significant day in rock history because two other albums came out the same day, uh, some two bands which are quite maligned by a lot of people. Let's just say that. Uh, results may vary by Limp Biscuit, which was basically the album where people finally said, "Yeah, we're sick of Limp Biscuit." Yeah, that album is just kind of boring, honestly. You know, but maybe I'll review Limp Biscuit one day, just as a joke and stuff. But I actually do enjoy their material. And the other album released was uh, "The Long Road" by Nickelback, which, believe it or not, which actually is one of the tracks on the album. I lo I actually really like that album. Which and it came out before all the right reasons, which was you know the album with look at this photograph on it. But yeah, so the long road came out in two thousand three as well. But that also this album came out as well. Hold on, let me just take this. Yep, back now, guys. My apologies for their little message. But yeah, I guess it's good I can pause my videos and just come back to them. But yeah, uh, so yeah, it released in two thousand and three. Nearly 15 years ago, but yeah, not as old as the other two, obviously, but yeah. So, what was it like? So, after fans waited for ages for new music, I guess, and stuff, but there was one song off of here. The song Won't Back Down was actually made for uh, the Daredevil soundtrack, which Daredevil, my opinion, is on the film, the one with Ben Affleck, I mean. I kind of like it, honestly. It is a bit of a guilty pleasure movie. People hate on it and stuff, but I thought it was alright. I thought it was decently entertaining. But Daredevil, the album, however, is freaking great. It's got it's got fuel on it. It's got uh, Evanescence, Rob Zombie. There is a Nickelback song on there, but it's actually a it's actually a good one. Uh, the Calling, yep, yeah, another band, you know, wherever you will go. But yeah, but the Daredevil soundtrack, check it out. But yeah, so Fuel released their song, Won't Back Down, actually, before this, like, months before this album came out. So it was kind of like a little bit of hype. But when it came out, 
it wasn't as it wasn't liked as much as the other two, but we're gonna go into it. So yeah, the, let's go into the CD and everything first. I actually got this from eBay. Unlike something like Human, which I got from the, my local uh, music shop. Believe it or not, we still have a record store. So yeah, but I got this from eBay because they had it there. So the album cover is uh, an x-ray. I actually really love this cover. It's like an x-ray kind of look. And it's two fingers like touching. It's kind of like that painting of, you know, like all them guys and they're like touching God's finger. I think you know what I mean with that painting. But I think it's supposed to be a representation of that. But it's obviously been done on an x-ray. So, you know, the bony, bony hands and stuff. And we've got the fuel... Uh, you know, fuel logo, natural selection, but it's in white and it looks a bit gritty looking. It's not as clean looking, the logo, but yeah. Uh, overall, I just really like the colour scheme on this one. Like, rather than blue, like something like human, it's like more black and like blue, I guess. Black and dark blue. But yeah, we got a weird like advertisement from 2003, forget that. <laughs> uh, we got a picture of bony fingers again. There's the CD. Uh... Which very similar to the something like human CD, but that was orange and this was this is blue, but it has the same F logo on it. But yeah, so that's the inside of the CD, and it's, it still works really well. So don't worry about that. And uh, we've also got the picture of them on the back and the tracks. And you will notice something as well. When Fuel went on this brief hiatus, Brett changed. Rather than having like you know like. Uh, you know his blonde hair and a fringe and then he grew his hair out really long he just cut it all off and spiked it up and he grew some facial hair as well so yeah that is Brett Scallions can you believe how different he looks and the other guys in the band look the same we got Carl Bell with Jeff Abercrombie and uh, Kevin Miller and also you notice on his shirt he's got a motorhead shirt so yeah that's cool you got one band ad advertising another <laughs> Anyway, give me fuel, give me that, give me that what Johnny's are. But anyways, so yeah, def Brett definitely looked different from his short break from the band. Well, you know, getting his surgery and stuff like that. But yeah, those are the those are the images for it. Actually, before I start the review, I'll just mention a few things I forgot. In the something like human review, um, I forgot to mention some of the music videos. Bad Day had a music video where Brett had blonde hair, but he had really long. He had like long blonde hair. Like, he actually grew it out, and that was a decent music video, but, you know, you know, it's like, there's a scene where a woman gets hit by a car, so, yeah, that's a little bit intense, but that was a good video. And Innocent had a video as well, where they're in this kind of, like, dark-looking room, this dark blue kind of room, and they're all singing away and stuff like that, and Brett's got long hair in that one as well, but, yeah, just, just thought about mentioning it. So, yeah, uh, let's begin, let's go through the tracks. So track number one of Natural Selection, which by the way, I really love the title of the album, it is really good. But yeah, track number one, Quarter. Hands down, without a doubt, Fuel's heaviest song. This freaking song, it's just, you know, the guitars, the you know, the guitars and everything like that, the bass. I will mention as well, the bass has gotten better on this album. One of the critiques of something like Human for me was that there was bass on it, but it wasn't very loud. But this one fixes the bass problems, and it really does. Quarter is just so good. You know, and, and the song title is called Quarter because it's, I ask no quarter friend. And... Um, I guess it's about getting revenge on somebody and stuff, but I'm not entirely sure. But this song is definitely the big, like, metalhead kind of anthem or hard rock. You know, this would get the crowd wild and crap like that, you know, shit like that. But, yeah, so the guitar, you know, the guitars are crazy sounding. And then there's a guitar solo, like a proper type solo in the middle of it. And the, and the, and the drums, you know, they change speed and... Near, towards the end of the song and obviously Brett Brett's voice does sound a little bit different uh, it's not entirely noticeable but he really works it on this track and honestly this is an amazing song because it just throws you right into the album it throws you right into the fire the fuel and the fire but yeah Quarter brilliant song and another thing about it this song was actually in quite a few uh, games at the time, uh, you know, that came out in like 2003, 2004, um, and one of them, a game that a lot of you probably will know, 
Need for Speed Underground. Not the remake thing, that probably wasn't as good. Uh, the classic on PS2, Xbox and GameCube. Yep, Quarter is in there and it really does fit. This song is fast, frantic, and it you know it makes you want to win the race. So yeah, Quarter, bloody amazing. And it's heavy, and it's just so intense. I mean, it's not like death metal heavy, but it, it has a lot of corn. Like, it feels like the band Corn almost. Like, the way Brett sings sounds like Jonathan Davis, and the and the bass and the instruments sound like Corn. But yeah, anyway, so Quarter, check it out, amazing. Uh, track number two, Down Inside of You. I don't think this is good. This is good as Quarter, but it's still like a decent follow up track. Oh, yeah, also, there's a bit of piano work in Quarter as well, just like a few keys just chiming, you know. Really atmospheric, but yeah. Days with, uh, not days with you. We'll get to that. Down inside of you, kind of, kind of starts with a little bit of ambient sound, kind of a bit silent hillish, but then it does go into the heavy riffs. But yeah, and then we notice kind of a trend on this album. There's a lot of lyrics about romance and breakups, you know. Never thought I'd feel this way. Like a lot of like emotional, kind of like emotional lyrics, mostly from Carl Bell. But yeah, I, I mean that was on something like Human and Sunburn as well, but it definitely did start on this one. So Down Inside of You, it does have a good chorus. Down inside of you, deep inside of you. But it's not as memorable. But it still is a good rock song. Uh, track number three, Million Miles. Oh. Brilliant song, this. I was meant to do, but anyways, Million Miles. Uh, this song, also forgot to mention, that's the that's the spine as well, if you wanted to see that. But yeah, Million Miles, very atmospheric sounding song. The lyrics are very powerful. It starts off very like slow and emotional sounding. On my way, for the days I found no sorrow. Very soulful, and then... Like, you know, most Fuel songs, the electric guitars and the drums kick in and Brett sings his heart out again. You're like, you were a million miles away. And honestly, it kind of depresses me because looking on Wikipedia, million, a million miles actually was a single, but it barely charted. Like, it barely reached the top 100 and stuff like that. And it didn't have a music video at all. So nobody remembers this song and it is honestly depressing. Because there's some great moments of this song. You get the heavy riffs, but like the really like soulful bits of the song as well. And there's like some, you know, bass in the background and stuff. Like sorry if I'm not like uh describing it right. But yeah, there's there's great bass in it and everything, great changes. It's just very emotionally driven. And the song I can relate to personally because there's some lyrics about Going through hard times and wanting to be away from it and stuff, and you know, depression and stuff. So yeah, Million Miles is just incredible song. Some people would find it a little bit generic, you know. I've heard the term butt rock, which is like, you know, southern kind of sounding rock, but I don't think so. I think it's a great song, but people don't know about it and that's sad. But yeah, Million Miles. I always listen to this one from this album. Uh, track number four, Falls On Me. Falls On Me is easily... Probably the most well-known song off this album. It was it was fairly popular when it came out. And it did get a music video. The music video is them just kind of like jamming inside the studio and stuff. Not anything really that special or big. But yeah, Falls On Me. Uh, what else can I say? It's a love song. It's a love rock song. You know, and even Carl Bell said himself on Wikipedia, he actually said this song is about, you know, how couples cope in a monogamous relationship. You know, when you... How you and your lover and everything like that you should be. You know, all of your ways, all you dream falls on me. You know, it's it's having that special someone in life and everything like that. It is like an emotionally driven song. It is definitely like a power ballad style song and definitely feel good. It's good. Falls on me. But yeah, it's, it's kind of strange of all the songs on this album, this was somehow the most popular. Because... It does clash with a lot of them, but still, it is a good song. I listened to it a lot when I got into Fuel, so I have a lot of memories with it. I, I don't really relate to it as much, because, to be honest, single as fuck. So, 
you know, I don't have a lover to share this song with, but it's fine, and I get the message that it's bringing about, you know, it's very, very radio friendly. Moving on, uh, track number five, uh, These Things, easily one of the most slowest and the most atmospheric song on the album, you know. I have a smile that hides me. You know, these things have gone. It's just like, you know, a lot of like acoustic guitar strumming and everything like that. Um, there is there is a guitar solo eventually and it does get fast. Well, actually, no, not fast, but it, the electric guitars do get kind of like intense. But the drum beat is overall slow sounding. And it it definitely is a soulful sound, like a, a soulful song, like a sensual sounding song. I'm not entirely sure what it is about, but I think it's another depression kind of song. And there is like a guitar solo that is really good. So yeah, I have to appreciate that. Like Fuel, unlike a lot of 2000s bands, they actually did play guitar solos. So that's really impressive of them. But yeah, these things, it's good, but it, it's, it's a little bit bloated. It goes on for quite a bit, but... It doesn't reach over the five minute mark, so that's okay. Uh, number six, we're, we're getting to another good one, guys. Won't Back Down, Bring You Hell Remix. Well, Bring You Hell Remix. Yep, I already mentioned this one. This was the first song people heard from this album, Won't Back Down, because, well, what else can I say? It's about freaking Daredevil. It's about Matt Murdock. The lyrics, you know, we're live! Won't back down, I wear the bell, I've come to bring you hell. You know, it definitely fits with the feel of the movie, even though the film wasn't that good. But it's definitely a song that people associate with Deadpool. I mean, other than Shimmer, Hemorrhage, and maybe Bad Day, it is probably one of them, it is probably like their most well album because, you know, their most well known song because of Daredevil, a lot of people know this. And this song had a music video, which I'm, I'm officially gonna state this. Uh, Won't Back Down has Fuel's best music video. I just love the video, man. I mean, it has it has them playing on top of a freaking skyscraper, like Brett's got crazy spiky hair and a beard and like a mustache and stuff and he's screaming. And you've obviously got clips from the Daredevil movie, you know, him running on over buildings and stuff. It's just it's just a great music video, honestly. It's a little bit cheesy, but I, I just enjoy every second of that video. But yeah, the song is a little bit on the generic side. It's got a very simple chorus and stuff, but it, it has that good hard rock feel with some of like the, you know, melodic, kind of like Linkin Park-esque moments. But it is really good, and honestly... This is probably the closest that Fuel ever got to be new metal, to be honest. Like, you know, that, that kind of like 2000s style of music. But it isn't new metal because there's no rap in it and stuff. But it is with the riffs and stuff. It sounds a bit corn-like. But yeah, Won't Back Down. A lot of people know this song. You know, they're used in a lot of freaking AMVs. Like Naruto and shit like that. But yeah, Won't Back Down. It is a really good song. And it's very memorable. And got some great heavy riffs on it. It's a great heavy song. Uh, track number seven, uh, Running Away. Now, the beginning of this song is very like slow and atmospheric. We hear like string instruments and weird like beeping sounds and everything like that. And then it just go. Then the guitars start, and it's kind of like another kind of like I won't say a romance song, but it is like a, a power ballad type song. You know, I'm running away to you, I cannot escape from you. But it, it is like really good, honestly. And that atmospheric intro really just leading well to the other rest of the song. But yeah, um, I will say though, I can't believe this song wasn't a single. I honestly, with the way it's structured, I honestly would have expected this to be like a single type song. Or at least with some kind of video, but it wasn't somehow. But yeah, running... Running away, it's got a really catchy chorus and stuff like that, and I it is one of the, like the love kind of songs on the album, but it isn't entirely. It's go it's basically going to the person you want to be with, but yeah, running away, yeah, good one. Uh, track number eight, <sighs> straight up romance ballad type song, most of all, yeah. I can't believe this one wasn't a radio single because it honestly does have all like the effects. It has the it has the Green Day the Green Day style guitars like like you know them them like pop punk 
S guitars. I would say simple plan, but that would be an insult to fuel because simple plan shit. But anyway, but it is like that honestly, and the lyrics are just they're a little bit melodramatic to be honest. And I love you now, and I hate you now, but I miss you most of all. Like it's very like romance. Like sounding, and there's other lyrics, you know. We sat by the water side, you know. Do you recall that night? The nights we cried ourselves to sleep. You know, this is easily like rom, you know, romance type stuff. This could, this song could have been in a bloody rom com, as far as I know, like a 2003 rom com. But it wasn't. But yeah. Now this was definitely when they were starting to like kind of change their style from straight up gr post grunge to like radio rock, straight up radio rock. But yeah, most of all, it is still a good song, and it's got it's got good instruments. It's got a nice solo and a nice fade at the end. So yeah, still good production. Most of all, good romantic song. Uh, question. Why did I say question? <laughs> No, it's not maths, is it? Um, well, it is. Uh, track number nine, Getting Through. And it's spelled through like drive through and there's a question mark. But yeah, Getting Through, another heavy song. It's got very like corn-esque riffs, riffs, riffs to it. Like, you know. But am I getting through to you? It is a good song, but it sounds way too similar to Walk Back Down. So I guarantee you, when you first listen to this album, you probably will mix up some of the tracks, and I don't blame you. Getting through, though, it is it is a good, like, heavy song, since, honestly, like, there isn't that many heavy songs on this album. Even when you get Quarter and Walk Back Down, this is the only other heavy song. But yeah, it is still pretty good. It's got good riffs, and it's got kind of, like, aggressive moments in the singing. But yeah... Getting through, it's all right. Am I getting through to you? Yeah. Uh, number ten. Uh, track number ten. Uh, die, die like this. It's another like soulful style ballad. It starts off and it's got lyrics about you know angels and everything like that. But then the chorus goes into like a straight like you know um, you know paint by numbers uh, you know radio single type and chorus you know I never wanna die like this cry like this and it sounds way too similar to Falls On Me except it wasn't obviously a big single it's one of the, like the lesser known tracks but yeah that's but the rest of the song doesn't sound like Falls On Me so a lot of people would mix it up with one of the others but yeah die like this it's all right but it isn't like particularly memorable in my opinion track number 11 look now, Luck is an important track to mention because Brett Scallions himself actually wrote it, unlike Carl. You know, if you look in the lyric manual of this, it'll say written by Brett Scallions. So, yeah, Luck, it kind of has a country vibe to it. Like, the guitars are like... Like, they're, they're a little bit, like, bluegrass sounding, if you get me. And the verses are proper weird. Like, Brett's, like, using, like, a voice kind of changer thing where his voice sounds muffled. And he's saying stuff like, It's cold outside in the middle of the night and my brain is left in the fridge. And weird lyrics like that. And the, the chorus is pretty damn... It's pretty simple. It's not really, like, worth writing home about. But it is just kind of, like interesting to see like the actual bloody singer of the band wrote this unlike the guitarist so look it is a fun fun to listen to but it isn't the most memorable which actually is kind of a bad thing about this album in general uh now finally track number 12 days with you another freaking romance song natural selection more like bloody love songs selection but anyway so days with you you know, it, it has like a nice kind of rock feel to it, like a soulful feel. But there is some heavy riffs in it that kind of like call back to Sunburn, in my opinion. But the chorus, the chorus is fairly simple. But like that, some of the verses are like proper, like romancy. You know, all the days with you, my love. You know, lyrics. It's it's a little bit cheesy, but it's not cringy in the slightest. It's still good. But yeah, Days With You, fairly simple, kind of like romantic feeling song. And uh, the song, actually, interestingly, ends with a drum solo. So the drums start playing, and uh, the, the guitars basically fade out, and we're left with the drums just... That's 
my impression of drums there. But yeah, and we hear the drums just like end, you know, and the drums basically fade and the album ends. And that is an interesting thing that they added because a year later, Kevin Miller was actually kicked from the band. So it honestly gives this kind of album and album a depressing feel to be honest which kind of a depressing but beautiful feel if you get what i mean so it ends with a drum solo when the drummer was kicked out of the band and there's a reason for that uh before i get to the final you know sum up this actually i'll sum up this album now if you want uh overall natural selection it is still a really good album it is still deserving of the few like retrospective, you know, the discography. But I don't think it's as good as Sunburn and something like Human. I don't know, it's just some of the songs feel too like similar and stuff, and some of them do feel a little bit like bloated, if you get me. Like they don't go on for like over like five to f- five, six and seven minute long songs, but they are like feel a little bit samey other than the singles. And it's weird how there was only two proper singles on this album, Falls On Me and Won't Back Down. And considering the other songs on the album kind of copy these big singles. So I don't really know what that's all about, to be honest. And a lot of the songs do sound samey. But good things about this album, the production is fantastic. uh, To the point where it actually got a nomination for the 2004 Grammys. I'm not joking you. As much as Fuel has been forgotten about... They actually got a freaking nomination for a Grammy. It didn't win, obviously. Some some bloody, not Radiohead, but some album that I've never heard of won. But still, it does show you. I mean, it is still just like a rock album. It's not like proper experimental. It's your typical guitars, drums and vocals and some string instruments. But it honestly is great sounding. And it really shows up that Fuel stepped up the game in terms of the production each time. But yeah, it definitely gives it like a radio friendly feel. So Fuel basically went from straight up post grunge to radio rock. So that's kind of an interesting evolution. But things after this album were a little bit go- doom and gloom. Sorry, I tried to get that out there. I'm a little bit tired, but yeah. But yeah, things went a bit downhill after this album, which... I can sum up, actually I'll sum it up now, but basically, uh, obviously Kevin Miller got kicked out from the band because allegedly Brett was actually lip syncing concerts because his voice (coughs) was that destroyed after recording this album that he he could barely sing on stage and instead of getting a break, Carl Bell, I guess, I guess Carl kind of forced him to sing. And they basically lip-synced him. And it's kind of weird. Like, if you look at Fuel's concerts from about 2004, nearly all of them have him lip-sync him. And the depressing thing is that none of these songs got played live. Barely any of them got played live because of those, you know, bad things in the band. But, yeah. So, Kevin, like, told people that Brett was, like, lip-syncing. So, Carl didn't want people to know this. And they kicked him out of the band. And because they had no drummer, they went on another hiatus... And in 2006, Brett, like, Brett left the band. So, yeah, that's basically how, and their career was almost destroyed. And he did, the, Brett did this because he didn't like the way the band was going and stuff like that. And Carl still wanted to carry on with his envision with the album Angels and Devils, which... We'll get to, but it's a bit of a doozy. And I don't have it on CD, so yeah. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, Overall, uh, you should still check out Natural Selection, because it is still a good album. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video, Star Wars video. Peace.